As the live export impasse moves into its fourth week, there's rising industry concern that Indonesia is making preparations to reduce its reliance on Australian feeder cattle. The Agriculture Minister Joe Ludwig held talks with his opposite number in Jakarta this week and would have been left in no doubt how seriously the Indonesians regard the sudden suspension of the beef trade. Export permits expire this week and it's predicted that even if a resumption can be negotiated soon, the Indonesians won't be accepting anything like the numbers from Northern Australia that they have previously. At the same time, South Australian Independent Senator Nick Xenophon was introducing a private member's bill to Federal Parliament to phase out the trade altogether. He's speaking to Kerry Lonergan. Senator, uh, firstly, thanks for your time joining us on Landline. Pleasure. Do you have really have any idea of the scale and magnitude of what your bill proposes? I've had lots of strident representations from those who are concerned about the impact of this bill, but I've also had many thousands of representations from people who are concerned about the issue of animal cruelty uh, and about dealing with this in a comprehensive way. I'll get into that in a moment, but first of all, ultimately the aim of your bill yeah. is to bring to an end an industry that contributes a billion dollars or more to export income has hundreds mm. if not thousands of small businesses involved and, if I can use a Canberra cliché, employs thousands of Australian working families. You want to bring it all to an end. And over a three-year period, after three years, it needs to be done on a transitional basis and a model for reform, a model for change, is what occurred in New Zealand with their their live trade in terms of sheep. Uh, that was brought to an end some four years ago. I read the comments that seems to be a bipartisan policy. I read the comments of the New Zealand minister that they won't be resuming that trade. And my primary concerns when I was involved in this issue some time ago uh, was about the number of sheep that have died on journeys to the Middle East, uh, halfway around the world. Uh, and I think it's important that we the perspective needs always to be one of animal cruelty and also building up the capacity to sell chilled meat to a number of these markets. Let's talk about processing, mm. processing in northern Australia. Mm. You want these northern cattle to be processed across northern Australia and sent to Indonesia as box beef. Well, that has to be the long-term solution. But that's, there will be a Senate inquiry chaired by Senator Bill Heffernan, who uh, passionately disagrees with me on this issue. I respect him for that. Um, I, we need to look at the beef market. We need to look at the way that the uh, market operates in terms of the number of processes, where there's, whether there is sufficient uh, competition, and all, and all these associated issues need to be dealt with. Yes, we have two major processes in Australia present, Tees Brothers mm. and JBS or JB Swift. Yes. Neither of them are in northern Australia. Another very smart operator called Roger Fletcher, he's not in northern Australia. Mm. Do you know why they're not in northern Australia? That's what, well, they say, from what I've heard initially, and I don't want to preempt anything that the Senate inquiry will bring up, uh, they, they're talking about the economics of it. I think we need to hear evidence on that as to why the um, processing industry in northern Australia, uh, as to why there was a demise in that industry... These are issues that we need to deal with, but I've got to emphasise the immediate issue is how do you deal with issues of animal cruelty so that the trade can resume? Uh, what can we do to bring this trade to an end in the longer term? And I thought, after cons consultation with Animals Australia, with the RSPCA, that three years seems to be a reasonable period to allow for transition. So you're going to crack a, a nut with a sledgehammer, so to speak. You're going to stop the trade because of animal cruelty in Indonesia? No, not just Indonesia. We've seen details most recently this week, earlier this week, in terms of Kuwait, uh, in terms of... We know what happened in Egypt a number of years ago, in 2006, where the uh, then Howard government suspended the trade uh, until there was uh, some significant improvements in the system. But there's this issue about... Uh, Sending, sending animals in terms of a live trade uh, thousands of kilometres in many cases when you're talking about the Middle East trade, that seems to be inherently uh, inhumane, uh, that it is cruel. And if you can build up a capacity to sell uh, boxed uh, chilled meat, surely that is something that we should be looking at rather than some people saying, look, you know, the only way we can do this is in the live trade. Now, I think that there's going to be a very robust process where... All these views will be heard uh, in terms of the Senate inquiry, in terms of the process by which these bills are dealt with, and that's a good thing. I'm, I'm, and I will be going to the Northern Territory next month 
to sit down and uh, talk firsthand to a number of these cattle producers because I believe that's the right thing to do as part of a, a robust democratic process. I don't think there's any disagreement about cruelty to animals and the process should be fixed. Mm. But, there's, for example, we have 2,000 people killed in road accidents across Australia each year, but we don't ban cars. Surely we should fix the system rather than just destroying the system completely. I don't know about the analogy in terms of uh, people being killed in road accidents. We try and do everything we can to to reduce that. I don't think I think that if there is an alternative, and the alternative here is to look at building up our uh, abattoirs here in Australia, and I think we need to look at the lessons that New Zealand learned from uh, banning their live sheep trade. Uh, New Zealand, such a, he a country heavily reliant on agriculture, was able to achieve those changes and there appears to be bipartisan support for those changes. I think that we need to look at alternatives rather than just saying the only option is to continue the live trade. But in the meantime, I agree that you need to have the live trade uh, on an interim basis. Uh, where I disagree with the MLA and with the cattlemen uh, and women of the Northern Territory and Northern Australia is to look at a longer-term solution. Let's uh, look at Indonesia. Have you ever been to a wet market? In fact, have you ever been to Indonesia? I have been to Indonesia. And you've been to a wet market? I haven't been to a wet market, but I'm familiar with, with a wet market, yes. So you understand why the locals actually go to a wet market? Well, mine, because there are issues there in terms of refrigeration, but we need to look at building up that capacity in terms of chilli uh, chilling rooms, uh, refrigeration and the like, in terms of building up that market. But people in Indonesia want their meat hot rather than cold. Do you yes, understand I, I, that? I understand that, but just as consumer tastes change, I think it, that's why there ought to be an evolving process to try and bring about those changes to provide um, the best quality meat uh, in the best conditions. And having chilled meat seems to be, from a hygiene point of view, uh, preferable to the wet markets that we see in Indonesia and other parts of the world. Um, I'm not saying this is going to happen overnight, but at least we can aim to do this so we can actually see uh, a significant change in the way that uh, Australian animals are being treated. I'd rather animals being slaughtered here in Australia using the world's best practice rather than chancing it uh, with some supply chains that are questionable uh, in countries where the humane treatment of animals does not appear to be as, as much of a priority as it is here in Australia. OK, back to Australia for a moment. Seven million cattle approximately involved in the live export trade. What happens to those seven million cattle? Well, what happens in the short term is to try and resume the trade uh, on the basis that there is a humane, animals are treated humanely, that there is a strict supply chain um, and I know that from the discussions I've had with the MLA uh, and the uh, Cattle Association up north uh, is that they, they, want, they all want to ensure that animals are treated humanely. That has to be uh, the primary goal and I think that it just seems incredible that it took a television program, it took Four Corners several weeks ago uh, to to expose what appears to have been going on for a number of years and there appears to have been a, some systemic failures in terms of dealing with this trade and the way that animals were treated. We're running out of time, uh, Senator, but uh, just one last question. Mm. A lot of talk in Canberra recently about stunts. This smacks to me of a stunt. You're putting forward something which can't possibly succeed, but you're getting a lot of publicity. Are you in a deal with the Greens, etc., on this matter? There's no deal um, with anyone on this. I've had long-term... I've had discussions with Andrew Wilkie. Um, I was approached by uh, the RSPCA, by Animals Australia... Uh, they've raised this issue with me. I've raised these issues in terms of the number of sheep dying on, on journeys to, to overseas markets um, for a number of months now. Um, you know, I know a thing or two about stunts. I don't regard this as a stunt. I 